This is the day the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. Thanks for joining us in online worship this morning. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will make God's presence known to you as you worship with us. Just wanted to let you know that we as a church family uh, want to congratulate Pastor Isaiah and Grace in their wedding. I realize it was a few weeks ago, but we want to celebrate with them. And we are praying as a church family as they uh, for the Lord's blessing as they start this new chapter in their lives together. I want to remind all of you who call First for Methodist Church your church home to check your emails the, from the church office uh, that gets sent out uh, every week to let you know what's happening in the life of our church and the different things that are uh, being made available to you. Or if you have any questions, you could also contact the church office. Let's pray. Most wonderful God, we as human beings are often foolish and we're flawed. And as we think today of who you are and your son, we too delight in your beloved son. It's in his name that we gather as a church. Open the heavens that we may catch a glimpse of the light and love that transforms our lives with beauty that isn't of our own making, O oh God. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now we will continue in worship through song. You did 
you're alive You rule, you reign You said you're coming back again I know that you will And all the earth will sing your praises All the earth will sing your praises Good morning. This morning's scripture reading is from Psalm 29. Please join with me as I read. A Psalm of David. Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon leap like a calf, Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. This is the word of the Lord. Amen.
please join me now as we pray together. God, today we gather needing grace and the gift of forgiveness granted through your Son. We confess that we have not always listened to your voice or to the voice of your prophets. We admit that we have not acknowledged John the baptizer, who proclaimed a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. We acknowledge that in our failure to do so, we missed John's all-too-important declaration about the greater one who was coming. Yet we know that when we confess our sins and shortcomings, you show up and you shout out. May today we receive your forgiveness and put regret behind us and walk in the joy of the Lord because you revealed your son in the waters of the Jordan and you anointed him with the power of the Holy Spirit to proclaim good news to all people. Sanctify us by that same spirit that we may proclaim the healing power of the gospel by acts of love in your name. God of grace and glory, you call us with your voice of flame to be your people, faithful and courageous. As your beloved son embraced his mission in the water of baptism, inspire us with the fire of your spirit to join in his transforming work. We ask this in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A few weeks back, a few of my family, myself, Tracy, and Lila, uh, went out to see the Great Conjunction. Maybe some of you read about that. The conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn in the night sky. The combination of these two brilliant bodies um, is what some scholars believe formed that single light that the Magi, the wise men from the east, used to find their way to Bethlehem to see the new king. On the night we went out, uh, as we looked to the southwest where it was uh, happening, the planets were not completely aligned. It was still a little bit uh, as we looked up into the heavens when we could see. So we said, well, let's come back tomorrow night and uh, see them when they're supposed to be completely aligned and form one brilliant, bright body in the heavens. So the next night we went out when it was time, waited an hour after sunset, and looked up into the southwest sky as we drove just a little ways out of town to see clouds. Kind of disappointing. I mean, (laughs) there were stars as we looked some other directions, and you could see off in the side the moon was there, but the clouds were covering where that Bethlehem star was supposed to be in view. Kind of a letdown for us. This Sunday marks a very significant day in the life of the church. In fact, on Wednesday uh, was Epiphany. That's when we remember God's revelation, his showing himself to us as human beings. And as we reflect on this year that has been filled with difficulties and upset, the year that was 2020. Maybe you're you're like me. You're starting to feel a bit numb about things. So much bad news. You're punch drunk with all the, the strangeness that the global pandemic has been bringing, the upset in other ways, the loss of jobs for some people. Maybe some of you have lost loved ones in 2020. And as we as Christ Church walk through this epiphany, this remembrance, you know, we're really encouraged to see things through that revelation of his son Jesus Christ. You know, I I feel, maybe you're like me, that finding that light, it's good for me to stop and take stock of the light that is within me through Christ Jesus And the light that is around me as God is revealing himself to us in this world. So this morning as we look a little deeper at the epiphany, we're going to take a look at the gospel of Mark. That's where we've been starting in Advent. We've been to this chapter. I'm going to read from Mark chapter 1 and verses 4 to 11. 
And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. This was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I'm not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. I realize as we read this gospel and we think of, you know, things like Jesus' birth and all that, there's no guiding star in Mark's account. As we read through, there's no angelic messengers, you know, dancing up in the heavens, speaking to shepherds, telling of God's coming as all creation has been waiting. But this is still the gospel. It's still good news. And it's beginning with a prophet, John, who's standing by a river letting people know that someone greater is coming. As I said a few weeks ago, Mark's gospel, he's a writer with a purpose. He seems to be in a bit of a hurry. He's one a getting to the point kind of storyteller. Where Matthew and Luke, they fill in some more details about Jesus coming. In fact, they begin earlier when Jesus was a baby, coming into this world as a human being. And Mark moves further along to begin the story than these other two gospel writers. But it's worth us taking some time to work through his brief account, brief as it is, and see what the Lord is wanting to speak through Mark as a gospel writer. John, John the baptizer or the Baptist, is Mark's starting point. John is this prophet who's been preparing the way, as we said in Advent, for the Lord's Messiah, the Lord's anointed one. And his message to God's people, Israel, has been calling them to repent. It's a church word, but it means this idea of turning, turning from one direction to another, changing direction, changing the way you're living. And that sign of repentance, that turning, is then being baptized. And so John baptizes them in the Jordan River. For some of the people of Israel, it might have been a bit of a shock because they were considered God's chosen people. He had blessed them and through Israel was to bless the nations of the world. So they thought they already knew all there was to know about God. But John's message declared that this was a new day. A new day had come. God was up to something greater and that something greater was someone greater, the Messiah. John was pointing to God's revelation in Jesus. And then Jesus comes to John in the Jordan. Israel, those people who had come out to see John, had been waiting, like so many, for God to show himself. And they thought that John, the one that was baptizing people in the Jordan, was God's special anointed person. He was a big deal. And so people traveled from all over to see John. And John reminds them, no, I'm not the one. In fact, I'm not, even unworthy, I'm not worthy to stoop down and undo the sandals of the one who is coming. So Jesus comes to John, his cousin, God's son. This person who's more powerful than John 
this pure and spotless Lamb of God, comes and he seeks baptism from John. Jesus is looking for repentance. That's a little strange. Maybe we scratch our heads and say, how can this be? I mean, why does Jesus, God's Son, who is perfect, he's without blemish, why does he need to be baptized? Jesus is showing his commitment to his heavenly Father, Almighty God. God's restorative mission in the world. And as Jesus is a member of Israel, of the God's chosen people, the, he is then showing Israel, he's modeling for them this requirement of a fresh new start. Do you remember your baptism? Maybe some of you do and it's easy. Maybe it's not that long ago. Maybe for others it's harder to remember. It's been so long. But it's good to stop and remember that baptism is this idea of it's, it's not some empty religious ritual, but it's stepping into that new creation, this new life in Christ Jesus that God brings. And through baptism, we have, again, as we've talked about at times of baptism, the imagery of being buried, going under the water, being buried, and then coming up new. So that old is being torn away. Mark says, as he writes here, that as Jesus was coming out of the water, he saw heaven torn open, torn apart. Just as we were looking for that Bethlehem star in the southwest sky, on those cloudy skies. Sometimes we're looking to see God's true nature, and as we try to see it, it can be obscured. But to know that Jesus helps us see that the veil between us and God is opened. And as Jesus was baptized, the Lord shows himself, tearing apart the heavens. Maybe you're like me as you read this passage in Mark and you think of Jesus' crucifixion when he died, his death. In that moment of his death, the gospel accounts tell us that the veil of the temple that separated humanity, separated people from God, who is holy. There's the people who had come to worship, and there was the most holy place after several places. The most holy place where God dwells. And the veil that separated them is torn from top to bottom as Jesus dies. Here in Jesus' baptism is that foreshadowing of the full revelation of God. It comes through Jesus. And the Holy Spirit descends like a dove. And even more, God speaks. It's been 400 years since God has spoken directly to someone. And the voice that is heard comes from heaven. And speaks, You are my Son, whom I love. And with you, I am well pleased. You know, as you think about your baptism today, don't forget the significance of what took place. As I said, Jesus modeled for Israel. He modeled for us what it is to enter into baptism, to enter into that life. As Jesus was baptized, the Spirit descended and God spoke. And in the same way, as we're baptized, God speaks to us as we enter into that life, that, that new creation. Think of a few weeks ago, last week we, we did that John Wesley Covenant renewal service that some of you maybe took part in, where we recommitted our lives to the Lord through Jesus. And this morning... We're looking at God's revealing himself to humanity and we're starting this series now through the month of January of what it means to be a disciple. What does it mean to follow after Jesus when Jesus calls us to follow him, follow me? This moment, Epiphany, God is revealing his true nature to us. Just as Jesus heard those words, you're my beloved. 
we need to hear those words. You are beloved, and with you I am well pleased. You know, without this, we can never really fully know God. For a great many people that think Almighty God in their hearts and minds is always angry, he's always upset, someone who is yelling, and their hearts are filled then with shame and fear. We need to hold God in the right regard. And so the Bible talks about fearing God, revering God. But that doesn't mean we don't understand or we shouldn't understand this. That as the heavens opened and revealed God's nature, we need to take note. God revealed himself to us, that he loves us. He loves us. And as we turn to him, he says, you are my beloved. In fact, I died for you. As we've wrestled with these past 12 months and maybe struggled to move forward, Mark helps us to see the greater spiritual reality that, as I shared, maybe has become obscured like those clouds. Made it difficult for us to move in and know God more. Today we see in this passage, we are loved. We are loved. And then as we respond and repent and turn to God to to fill our hearts and lives with his love and grace, to remind us, he also says, you know, I am calling you my beloved and I am pleased with you. Think of moving in to 2021. Transformation is only going to happen from a place of understanding that we are worthy through Jesus Christ and that God's love and affirmation is there for us. Knowing that we're loved and claimed helps us then embrace the future. It gives us that power and courage to embrace the possibilities of all that's in front of us, the good and the bad. Think in your own life. If you're trying to seek joy, to seek fulfillment in this world from this place of fear and uncertainty, of worrying about everyone around you, what they think, then you're always going to feel like you're not enough, like you're inadequate. But if we come from this place in this gospel where Mark tells us that the revelation of God for those who turn to him through Jesus is God loves you and says he's pleased with you. Then being loved and affirmed by our heavenly father, we gain this confidence that isn't boastfulness. It isn't being puffed up or proud or arrogant. It becomes a foundation to walk in the light, the light of Jesus. As we head into 2021, let's follow after Jesus. Remembering that God blesses us with those truths. Remember, you're loved and he is well pleased. Let's pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, it's so easy for us at times to get spun around to find our hearts maybe pulled back from you because we're ashamed and afraid. We thank you for the good news that the gospel writer Mark shares with us. That you, Lord God, as we think about you, we need to understand that you love us, that you died for us. Jesus, that's why you came. And I pray that you would help us to see that the heavens have been opened and to look within and around and understand that we stand in Jesus, loved and affirmed. And give us the courage to live out that truth, that good news with the world around us. And we ask it in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen.
In Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still and striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless faith, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied for sin on him was laid here in the death of Christ I stand there in the ground his body lay light of the world by darkness slain then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again. And as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he Returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I stand. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I stand. Now I want you to receive the benediction, the good word. Go now, live in the spirit of your baptism, even in the wild and hard places. Give yourselves completely to God and be enfolded by his tender and lasting love. May Christ be beside you and the Holy Spirit guide you as you go to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us this week. God bless.